Hi, I'm Ben, welcome back to my channel. I do love this time of the year, not for the weather, which absolutely sucks at the moment, and apologies, I am British, I have to mention the weather at least once every three videos. But I love that it's a time when publishers nail down their release schedules, at least for the first half of the year, and they start releasing their catalogues, and I can look at the Waterstones coming soon section, and just look for some books that I think are gonna chime with what I'm really interested in as a reader at the moment. And so that's exactly what I've done, and I've pulled together a list of 16 books that I'm really personally excited about in 2024, and hopefully you will Will be too. I'll run through these in publication order based on the UK publication date. So some of these might be released already in the US or come out at different times in different territories. And I do have copies of a few of them, but don't worry, this isn't a grift. I have copies because I asked for them and I've only asked for them because I'm really interested and excited by them. Let's get straight into it with a book coming out very soon on the 8th of February, which is Mongrel by Hanako Footman. This is published by Footnote Press, who have very kindly sent me an advanced copy. And this is a book that tells the intertwining story of three women across Japan and the UK. There's a young girl that's living in Surrey whose Japanese mother dies, a woman from the Japanese countryside who is pursuing a dream of becoming a concert pianist in London, and a woman working as a hostess in Tokyo's sex district. I'm very intrigued by how it's going to touch on the British-Japanese identity to tell a story of desire, belonging, and isolation. And I love reading stories that have like different strands that come together in interesting and surprising ways, so I really hope it does some of that. This has been on my radar for a while, and I am excited to get to it, although I'm not sure if I should save it for my trip to Japan later in the year or just crack on with it now. I am kind of between books right now and this is a contender so we'll see where I land. Coming out just a week later on the 15th of February is The Night Alphabet by Joelle Taylor. This is published by Riverrun and again very grateful to have been sent a copy. Taylor is a poet known for her collection Canto and Other Poems and this I believe is her debut novel. This is set in the 2200s in Hackney and is about a woman who walks into a tattoo parlour to get one final tattoo on her already heavily tattooed body. These tattoos are a bit of a map for the experience and history of women and as the tattooist set to work she tells the stories behind each one which come together to reveal a bigger truth. It's set across many places and time periods both in the future and in the past and I've just got this really good feeling about this one. I think it's going to be an absolute banger and that cover is really cool. The next book is The Dark Side of Skin by Jefferson Tenorio translated from Portuguese by Bruna Dantas Lobato. It's been released on the 20th of February by Charco Press. Tenorio is a Brazilian author and this book deals with the cordial racism of Brazil, as the blurb puts it. It uses this father-son relationship as a bit of a scaffolding to explore black identity in Brazil and the impact of racism, and particularly systemic racism, both mentally and physically on individuals. I've heard that the writing is absolutely stunning, so I'm really interested to give this one a go. Next is Butter by Asako Yuzuki, translated from the original Japanese by Polly Barton. It comes out on the 29th of February, published by HarperCollins. This potentially sounds like the most fun book on the list, and I don't mean fun in terms of subject matter because it's about a serial killer but it sounds like a bit of a romp. It's a translation of a Japanese cult classic from 2017 inspired by the real life story of the Konkatsu killer who was a woman who was a gourmet chef and a serial killer and she lured in lonely businessmen with her tasty food. This is the story both of the cook and the investigative journalist who tries to crack her case and deals with misogyny, obsession and the transgressive pleasures of food. On the 7th of March is a book that I've been really excited about for a while published by Picador is Martyr by Kave Akbar. This book seems quite difficult to describe but I will give it a go. It's about a man called Cyrus who is a bit lost in his life and he's still dealing with the trauma caused by his mother's death when her plane was shot down. That happened when he was just a baby and he's now an adult and newly sober and he starts to explore the mythologies and mysteries of his family's past, including the fact that his uncle fought on Iranian battlefields dressed as an angel of death, but also revelations about his mother that will change his entire perspective on her. It's supposed to be extremely funny and profound and quirky, and it's just had some rave reviews from some American bookish friends who I trust and who have already read it. I am really buzzing to dive into this one, and it's definitely on the TBR for next month. On the 28th of March, Simon & Schuster are releasing Fruit of the Dead by Rachel Lyon. This is a literary thriller that reimagines the myth of Persephone and Demeter set over the course of one summer on a private island. There's an 18 year old summer camp counsellor and she's offered a childcare job by this Fortune 500 CEO and signs up lured by luxury and opiates until she seemingly disappears. The book alternates between the younger woman's perspective and her mother's perspective and explores themes of love and control and self-destruction and it serves as a bit of a critique of American capitalism. I'm so excited to see myth retellings moving into this territory. I think it's a really fun way to use those old stories and give them new life. The next book I'm excited about is The Borrowed Hills by Scott Preston, which is being released by John Murray Press on the 11th of April. This is about 
two farmers trying to save their livelihoods against the backdrop of foot and mouth disease spreading across Cumbria, while also fending off some ruthless outside force that threatens their way of living entirely. It's been described as a western for Northern England, and as being lyrical, cinematic, visceral, and steeped in local folklore, which are all words that set my spidey senses tingling for a really good time. On the exact same day, the 11th of April, is probably one of the literary events of the year, because Mantle are releasing James by Percival Everett. Everett's become a little bit of a literary superstar in recent years following his Booker nomination for The Trees. He's a pretty prolific author and he's not slowed down at all. James is his next book. This is a retelling of Huckleberry Finn from the perspective of the enslaved Jim. I have only heard wonderful things about it. It's thought-provoking, funny, it's an emotional wallop. I don't really need to know any more because I know I'm already going to read it. I am sold and I'm very excited to dive into it soon. Maybe next month, maybe in March, but definitely ahead of its release in April. I'm also buzzing because Percival Everett is coming to Bristol for an event and I need to grab myself a ticket because it will be so cool to hear him talk about the book in person. Speaking of Bristol, the next book I want to share is one that has a very deep connection to it and that is Fast by the Horns by Moses Mackenzie, which is coming out on the 9th of May, published by Headline. This is the second novel from Mackenzie following his debut An Olive Grove in Ends from a few years ago. And one of the reasons I'm particularly interested in this one is that it is set in Bristol where I live. More specifically, the book takes place in an area of the city called St Paul's in the 1980s and follows the Rastafarian son of a community leader. There aren't too many more details about the book other than that, but there were rising racial tensions at the time and a famous riot in St Paul's in 1980, which I assume the book will deal with. Bristol has a pretty rich black and anti-racist history, including the bus boycott in the 60s and the more recent toppling of Edward Colston's statue and the unceremonious throwing of it into the harbour. I am very excited to read Mackenzie's take on a another chapter in that story. Also coming out on the 9th of May, published by Quercus, or potentially its imprint River Run, is Great Expectations. Not the Dickens classic, but a new novel by Vincent Cunningham. I'm actually not sure if it takes any cues from Dickens or has any relationship to it, but it is described as being a coming-of-age story rich with ideas. It follows 18 months in the life of David, a man working as part of a senator's campaign to become the United States' first black president. I've just pulled that from the description, so I'm not sure if this is set in the past or if a bar didn't happen in this timeline. But either way, I think this is going to be a really interesting state of the nation novel to contend with and think about, especially in what is, to be totally honest, quite a frightening election year. It's been getting dazzling reviews, so I'm very excited to tackle it. The Ministry of Time by Callianne Bradley is coming out on the 14th of May by Hodder and Stoughton. So this is a novel about a near future government ministry in the UK that brings expats from the past to 2020s Britain and follows a woman who works for the ministry as she meets and I assume falls for, a man brought forward from the mid-1800s. I feel a little bit differently about this book because for most of the other ones, I'm like already sold by the premise and I feel like I'm going to love it. This one, I'm a little bit more in two minds about. On the one hand, it seems a bit like a romance with a time travel theme, but on the other, it's been blurbed by Eleanor Catton and Max Porter. So I'm super, super interested to know how its literary sensibilities hold up. And while it's probably not like a pre-order or a day one purchase for me, I am tentatively perched to jump on it once I hear the opinions of some other readers that I trust. I know the proofs have been out there, so if you have already read it, I would love to hear what you think of it. Let me know in the comments. We're skipping entirely over June now to the 9th of July, when Long Island Compromise by Taffy Brodessa Ackner is being published by Headline. I think at this point, this book is a bit of a meme for my books to be excited about video. I included it last year because it was originally slated for a 2023 release, and then I talked about it again in a follow-up video because the release date was pushed all the way back to 2025, and now it has finally had a 2024 date announced and locked in and I'm really excited for it. This is a follow-up to Bredessa Ackner's frankly brilliant Fleischman is in trouble. This is a generation-spanning story about a man who is kidnapped and brutalised in the 80s and the long gestating trauma that it exerts on both him and his family as he reckons with it 40 years later. Bredessa Ackner writes so, so well about complicated family dynamics and she's able to skewer the wealthy while also creating empathy for them. So I think we're in for an absolute treat with this one. Not long after, on the 18th of July, comes Toward Eternity by Anton Herr published by HarperCollins. Anton Herr is a bit of a rock star of Korean translation. He's translated loads of books that you will have heard of, including two books that were nominated for the International Booker in the same year, Cursed Bunny and Love in the Big City. This, I believe, is his debut novel and it sounds super interesting, at least to me. It's set in a near future world where technology is raising all of these thorny questions about what it means to be a person. Radical cancer therapies replace the body's cells with small robot cells called nanites, and one recipient of this therapy creates an AI that understands 
understands poetry and approaches consciousness. It's giving Clara and the sun, but perhaps blurring the lines between technology and biology that little bit more. I love all of these big questions and I really enjoy reading stories that explore what might happen in our future. So I'm excited to see where her takes them. On the 1st of August, we are very blessed to be getting yet another Benjamin Myers book as Bloomsbury publish his new novel, Rare Singles. This is something of a more straightforward narrative than the hugely ambitious Cuddy. This is about a long forgotten, except by his fans, American soul singer who ends up in Scarborough when a fan tracks him down. It's described as being about the power of music and friendship. And given that Myers has a background in music journalism and how well he has written about friendship in the past, I have a feeling he's onto another winner here. Playground by Richard Powers is a novel I am hugely anticipating and it's coming out on the 26th of September published by Cornerstone. I believe there was a time when Richard Powers said after the overstory he wasn't going to write any more novels because he'd kind of expended all of his energies on it. Thankfully he did not stick to that and he gave us the lovely beautiful bewilderment an all-time favourite of mine and in October we'll get another. Originally when I heard this was about the oceans I was expecting another like climate epic like the overstory but for the oceans but instead this sounds a little bit different. Playground follows four people in French Polynesia at the frontier of seasteading, which I'd never heard of, but basically it's like permanent dwellings in the sea as an alternative to living on land. I think this is more than just like living on a boat, but actually constructing these pretty big mega structures in international waters. I will be very interested to see where Richard Powers takes it, and I'm sure I'll learn a lot because he is one author that is just so thorough with his research. So yeah, very, very excited for this one. The final book on this list is coming out on the 3rd of October, and that's Our Evenings by Alan Hollinghurst, published by Pan Macmillan. Not much is really known about this one other than the title, so it's possible that release date is a bit of a placeholder and we might not actually get it this year. But Hollinghurst is one of those authors that I've never read, but I assume that I will love. So I'm really excited to be an active reader, reading new releases at a time we're getting a new one from him. I do have The Sparshall Affair somewhere on my shelf, so perhaps I'll try and pick that one up ahead of October and give it a whirl first, possibly even a good contender for my Reading Shame Forgiveness Month in June, because I don't know why I haven't read him yet. I've got one bonus entry for this list, and that is a new book from Donna Tartt. Now, technically, this book doesn't exist, and you can prove anything with facts, but Donna Tartt releases a book about once every 10 or 11 years. Her last book was The Goldfinch, released in 2014, and so we are due a new one from her either this year or next year. I'm crossing my fingers for this year, and by adding it into this list, I feel like I am putting it out into the universe, manifesting some new Tartt treats. Fingers crossed something gets announced soon, because I think it would be one of the literary events of the year. Feel free to join me in a prayer circle in the comments. That's it for this video. Those are the books that I'm excited about this year. If there are any here that you are also excited about, or any that are new to you, do let me know in the comments. And also, if there are any books that I haven't covered that you are really pumped for coming out in 2024, let me know. There are tons Tons, tons more so I've definitely omitted a bunch of bangers from this list. If you liked the video please do give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more from me then hit the subscribe button but until next time toodles!